discipline is the most underappreciated uh, feature of a trader. And, uh, and, and it just can't be like that. Most traders have pretty good trading plans, but they cannot get out of their own way when it comes to being disciplined to follow that trading plan. So I'm, I'm here to, uh, to let you know that um, there is hope for you if you will happen to be undisciplined, if you've taken some, move your stops around and you've, you've, you've had some bigger losses than you had planned because you, you thought that stop was gonna be hit just to take you out and come back. And so you, you, you moved it around or you, you lifted up and, and just kind of observed as the market continued to go against you. This is the plight of the undisciplined trader, but there is hope. Let's get into the presentation because I want to describe to you the four pillars of the modern disciplined trader. And I call this the modern disciplined trader because I think there is a renaissance a, a bit of, um, of the importance of being disciplined as a trader. And at the end, I'm going to show you what we have uh, to offer that uh, that's, I call it semi-free but it's so important that you need to take advantage of it. From working with thousands of traders, I've discovered a few things, and most of the uh, uh, and uh, engineers, most most of them are smart. I always talk about when I when I talk in front of uh, groups like the Traders Expo and so on. I ask how many out there are engineers, and usually a third of the crowd raises their hand. There are some smart people out there, okay. Uh, most traders are smart. They're engineers, they're college grads, they're educated, and you don't have to be any of those things to be a successful trader. That's the other beautiful part of it. And I've also discovered that most traders hop from trading system to trading system. They're looking for that consistent trading result. They're looking outside of themselves for the consistent trading results. Most traders are frustrated is also what I've noticed. They're spending energy. There's no gain. They look at their monthly statement. They look at the top even the more successful of the strugglers look at the what they started the month with, what they ended the month with. Those figures are almost exactly the same. They see 50 trades happening through the month and they say, why did I spend all of this energy to get nowhere? No gain. Frustration. And, and I also discovered that most traders lose money. I think we all know that. However, um, we're always looking to be that eight and a half, nine percent that study shows that make consistent money in the in the stock market, the currency market, Forex, uh, the, where I usually spend most of my time in the futures market where you get uh, some pretty good leverage options like Matt does. Keep re They keep refunding uh, and, and start again over and over as they lose money uh, and doing the same thing all over again. So there are there are ways out of that. And that's the good news. Most traders are trainable. They are trainable. OK, most traders are willing to learn. That, that's not the problem. Most traders eventually come to grips with why they're not successful. OK, the problem is. The problem. Well, here's what the problem is not. It's not your trading system. The problem may be in part your trading plan. Now, the difference between your trading system and your trading plan is that the system is is the inner workings of the, the technicals really of your trading of your trading, which means the uh, technicals really of your trading plan. Uh, where do you buy? Where do you sell? The, uh, the, do you use Fibonacci? Are you, do you get your triggers from, uh, from candlestick formations? Uh, are you looking at option premiums? Uh, are, you, uh, are you looking at volatility? All of the elements in your trading system put together become your trading system. Your trading plan is not only how you put that together, but all of the other things in your trading, how you prepare your day, uh, how you study before you trade, how you end your day. Do you journal? Do you not journal? Do you pay attention to who you are as a trader? These are all part of your trading plan. Okay. The main problem is you. And, and I know that a lot of you don't want to hear it, but remember, you're easily trainable. The main problem is you, and it's not your trading plan. I've seen over my almost 40 years now of trading experience and training traders and, and training brokers and working for Payne Weber and working for um, International Trading Group, uh, I have seen it all as far as traders, professional traders, institutional traders, um, uh, um, individual traders, there is hope. You, you can be trained, but you must be disciplined in order to succeed. Okay, so you got to look in the mirror. 
you have to ask yourself, why is it so hard to face yourself? Why have you resisted this far in, in really paying attention to what you're doing as far as your mental and emotional concerns, where you're, where you're hopping off your trading plan uh, because of uh, the thought bringing up a particular emotion? You can't separate your, you as a person from you as a trader. This is a big deal. You are not... You are not a traitor. You're you're an a hu an individual, a loving father, loving husband, loving wife. You're an individual who happens to be a trader. When you're a trader, you put on your trading hat. You become a trader. Okay, that's your profession. But you're it's not you as a person. And when you lose in trading, and when you have a bad week or a bad month, it doesn't mean you're a bad person. Okay, it doesn't shouldn't result in you doubting yourself as an individual. You've got to look in the mirror and separate that. You can't take trading losses or gain or gains individually personally. So it's important not to overstate your success with gains or overstate your losses with losses. Everything is a smooth ride toward an inevitable goal, knowing that over time your trading plan will take care of you. Trading is a business. That's another thing that you need to um understand you need to run your trading as a business really there are only two things to master as a professional or as a successful trader one is your trading plan the other is your discipline to run your trading plan and everything else is a distraction okay i just spent a lot of time saying goodbye to a lot of facebook uh people who i i i just you know i just spend time reading they're garbage all the time. They're, they're kind of friends. They're hello friends, a lot of them. I've just decided to clear that trash out of my mind and out of my life. And, you know, you, you don't want to unfriend anybody because they, they take it personally like you hate them. Some of these people I really like. I just don't like the chatter. And so when I, when I'm a, when I trade, when I put on my trading hat, I, I take everything and put it aside. I'm, I'm there to run my trading plan. I'm a discipline. And I say to myself, I'm a disciplined trader and I do the things that a disciplined trader does. Okay. And you need maybe to start saying that to yourself. Okay. Here are the 10 characteristics of the disciplined trader. One, the strength to pull the trigger. You have to have the strength to pull. You have to have confidence in your system to take the trade. There are many reasons that I can go through that, that you can hesitate to take the trade, but most of it is the lack of belief in your trading trading plan or trading system or both. Excuse me, just took a drink. Uh, now, these 10 characteristics are characteristics that we approach in our training in the Discipline Trader Mastery Program, where we've really made our reputation in the industry. We are probably the the best known uh, and um, and have the most experience in training traders to be disciplined in our in our discipline trader mastery program the strength to pull the trigger is the first thing that we uh that we try to reverse if you have, are, are finding yourself not pulling the trigger because of the fear of losing or the fear of not being right or whatever reason and we can go through that at another presentation but uh there are ways to turn that around and turn that fear into confidence okay the second characteristic of the disciplined trader is overcoming the thoughts of fear and greed. Fear and greed are the flip sides of a of the same coin. Uh, you, when you when you've lost two or three or four trades in a row, uh, and the whole world seems like they're making money, you start to fear that that it's you and that maybe you don't belong in this, and maybe my system is not working, and and so that you don't take that next trade, and of course that's the trade that would have made it all back. Plus or the greed, where you we have three or four trades in a row, you say, "Wow, now I'm really on top of it." It's time to increase the number of uh, positions that I take because when you're on a roll, hey, I heard of all about it. You gotta step on them. You gotta step on it when you're doing well. Well, that greed can get you into more trouble than the fear. So, the characteristics of a disciplined trader is overcoming those thoughts and and, and, and of fear and greed. You've got to, in your mind, you've got to trade to make money. You're there to make money, and that's kind of an axiom to, um, or a corollary to the axiom that you've got to run your trading as a business, okay? 
Four, uh, fourth characteristics is, is you've got to visualize your success as a trader. Now, some of you may say, well, let's see, visualizing your success. You got to, isn't that like uh, the secret where people with long hair and, uh, <laughs> I guess that was my 60s uh, reference, but, you know, only hippies are, you know, looking, uh, closing their eyes and, and, um, and sitting in the lotus position and visualizing tomorrow is going to be a great day. Visualizing your success happens to be real. And those hippies, to a large degree, had it right. Uh, they may have lacked focus and direction and and the and a certain way to visualize that that has you uh, crystallize what you want because when you visualize when you have a picture in your mind of yourself as a successful trader and you hold that that vision in your mind even for 60 seconds in a relaxed uh, when in, in a relaxed sitting position even in front of your desk before you get started you take a deep breath and you visualize yourself for a minute as a very successful trader cheering yourself uh, and congratulating yourself for a successful day. What happens is that when you start to live your day, you, when you're presented with certain options, and, and not trading options, but choices, you wind up taking choices that lead you to that visualization because you have a particular picture of where you want to go. You don't stra you you wind up not straying as much when you get good at visualizing. So visualizing is a very important feature, and don't uh, don't 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 poo-poo this. Could be one of the most important features. I call it. Um, I like to. I like to call it positive expectation. You have to have a positive expectation as a trader. Another characteristic is the strength to take your losses. You've got to. You know, you've got to understand that losing and winning are part of the overall winning. So if you if you have the characteristic and the discipline and the strength of the strength to take your losses, you're going to get far as a trader. And, and when losses don't disrupt the flow and, and you believe, you understand that they're part of the flow, then you're going to have a much better time of it in the end, at the end of that monthly statement. Discovering your core values. Um, I think that uh, one of the mistakes that a lot of traders make uh, are, are, are not understanding themselves before they decide to put a trading plan uh, together. Uh, this is the reason why many trading plans that work for other people and are sold to you by other people are uh, don't work for you because they just don't fit. Uh, you you know are you a, a person who is a, a kind of an aggressive person that's willing to take more risks than others? Are you more of a conservative person that likes to capture uh, gains as you get them? There is a, there are, there are trading plans for everybody to fit every type. It's not a, you're not looking you don't you don't choose a trading plan by the by what did the best last year. Uh, I, I remember when I was with Payne Weber and we, uh, we were dealing with a lot of mutual funds, it seemed like all of the mutual funds that were the best one year were the worst the next year. And I don't know why that is, it's just an ebb and flow of things. Now over a 10 year period, they may have a different result. Um, I wasn't with them quite 10 years, but so I didn't find out. But I'm just saying to you that the, the key the key is identifying yourself and your core values and then matching with the proper trading plan. You've got to sustain focus. Now, uh, I talked about um, taking some deep breaths, uh, and, and, and I'm not talking about uh, listening to some uh, soft music and, uh, and a soft voice for, for a half hour and almost falling asleep. I'm not talking about that kind of meditational type focus. I'm talking about the kinds of of, of, of um, meditations, we'll call them, or subconscious training, as we call them, in, in our training where it's seven minutes long. You don't have time to fall asleep. I know some people that can fall asleep in seven minutes, but, but not after they've gotten up from a long uh, night of sleep. So when you sit in front of your desk and you take a few deep breaths and you put into your mind uh, some the positive things, I'm a wise and disciplined trader, and, I'm a, and, and I do the things that a wise and disciplined trader does, I... I I'm a master of focus, and when I sit at my desk, I understand that I'm there to do one thing, and that's to make money through my principles and core values as applied to my trading plan. I'm a wise and disciplined trader, and I do the things that a wise and disciplined trader does. I always end most of what I do with people with that statement. That's the big statement around here. I'm a wise and disciplined trader, and I do the things that a wise and disciplined trader does. You must sustain your focus. And the best way to do it is to get focused in the beginning. Then when after you're done, 
get focused in the end so that you can wrap up your trading and get on to your life and, uh, and, and have a terrific life because you know that, that you, and focus just as much on, on, on the beautiful things in your life outside of trading, okay? Exercise patience. This particular characteristic is probably, it is the most report, it's the, it's the, the most recorded element or characteristic for traders that talk about having a turnaround in their, in their fortunes. In other words, going from struggle or losing to, to some gains or massive gains. The idea of, of waiting for an A plus trade, we can't go through that today, but waiting for the perfect setup where, where you've got the right reward risk ratio, where it's hitting the, 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 the elements of your trading plan just the way you want, the very major support level as we've, um, as, as it's coming down in a, in, a, in a buy, let's say, and then having your trigger to buy to go back with the trend. If that's all the elements of your trading plan, sometimes when it's hitting that line, that when it's hitting that support, you say to yourself, well, it's there, it's hesitating, let's get it now. Why should I wait for the confirmation in order to get, I'm gonna lose, you know, why not grab that money too? So you put on your position a little bit early because you have a lack of patience. You must exercise patience. Okay, and that is the is uh, again is the key element. Surprised me the first years we were doing this. We've been doing this for 20 years for traders since 2000. We started the discipline trader, but exercising patience every year is the one that we hear most about. Sustaining discipline, and and again, what happens sometimes? It's it's like a gym membership. You you have a gym membership. You join. You go in January, and then by February, you're you're not showing up anymore. Um, you you have to sustain and make discipline and these short seven minute meditations, for instance, or other things that, that you can do that we have, we can offer you. These are the kinds of things that you need to do in the long term basis. You've got to make it a habit and to make it a habit, you've got to do it a series of times and, 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 and do it without question and make it part uh, and, 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 and make and take no excuses. Because if you can do something straight for 21 days in a row, they say uh, it can become a habit. But people fall off habits. Uh, I, I think that what's going to happen is this, as you sustain your discipline, as you maintain your discipline, you're going to start to see some of that turnaround in your success. And, 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 and maybe greed will enter in and you will not recognize it until it's a little bit too late. You'll go back and take a session on greed, capture that and turn that around into control. And then remember how it was when you sustain your discipline, you'll get, you'll from falling off the wagon, you'll come right back on the wagon. Sustaining discipline is big. And you got to manage your stress. Look, trading is a stressful thing, even for the disciplined trader. It, 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 it happens. It's it's stressful, but it's how you handle the stress. It's how you manage the stress. The stress is there. Stress can be good and it can be energetic. You just have to learn to reframe what's going on as far as stress is concerned. Okay, let's go through the four pillars of the discipline trader, um, of the discipline trading. Um, I'm just wondering uh, right here before I go, I'm looking if there's a, there is a chat area here. Can somebody, uh, whoops. Let's, uh, I think I got you back. Can somebody uh, go ahead and just give me, uh, just let me know that you're, um, that you're here with me and that you're hearing uh, everything I'm saying. Just want to, I, I tend to go off on a, on a tangent here. Just anybody want to give a comment? Can't quite see. So maybe um, Brett or whatever can let me know that everybody, that somebody's saying, I don't know if I can see that here, um, but I'm just going to continue. Um, all right, let's just continue, and um, because I can't seem to get my chat up here, but let's go. Um, it's not about me; it's about you. Know thyself, okay? The first, the first pillar is having a solid trading plan. Again, I've mentioned this, so we'll go through this quickly. Know thyself. Are you conservative? Are you a risk taker? Are you somewhere in the middle? Are you a bird in the hand type? Are you a let it ride type? Are, are there short emotional breaking points? Uh, are you sh are you sh a short emotional break? Do you do you get do you have a break point that's short or, or, or do you have the patience of a saint? So you need to know yourself. And then you, when your trading plan fits your personal style, it's easier to stay disciplined to follow your plan. I can't stress that too much. OK. Also, as far as a solid trading plan is concerned, you've got to know your time frame. 
in other words, time frame dictated by the, your availability to trade. As uh, uh, as Matt mentioned, not, a lot of his people work and and uh, and on the trade don't trade full time. Um, they're doing other things. So you need to uh, you need to define w what your time frame is. You, uh, and also your swing tolerance. You know, are you when you're trading? What is your if you see the high volatility? Is this the kind of thing that sets you off that gets you out of control? So you need to maybe stay in uh, stay in stocks and stay stay in uh, commodities that don't quite have some of that volatility because there's something to say about more positions on a low volatility than less positions with a high volatility. They can both do very well if your trading plan addresses that. Long are you a long term trader, a swing trader, an intraday trader? You got to know your time frame. Okay. Here's your elements of a trading system. Okay, real quickly, define your entry signal. Okay, you've got to know where you get in. You define your stop level and position size. And I could go on a whole day about position size because I think that may be where most people uh, are not utilizing the ability to manage not only stress, but, but of more importantly, risk. And uh, they tend to, uh, when I start making money, I actually reduce my position size because I tend to be, want to conserve what I have as I don't stop trading because when I'm on a roll, I want to take a, I, I want to take advantage of that. But I reduce my position size in order to maintain what I have just in case I do run into that loss. It's not going to be a big one. I'm not going to take my profit away. Nothing worse than having a big profit and giving it back. You know, when I, I play a lot of tennis, I've been playing fairly competitively lately, and we were in a, a match the other day where we were down 5-1 and wound up coming back and winning that, uh, that match 7-5 in a tournament and felt really good. But one of the game that turned it around was the one that they were up 40 love. They were up 40 love, and we came back and went and, 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 do, and came to deuce they actually were had an ad, an ad, a plus one. We came back and won that game. So when you, they thought they were going to win, we came back and scared them. That, that we were, then they looked like they were going to take the lead again, and then we came back and we finished them. And we came, we completed the comeback for that game. Well, that turned everything around and made it happen for the rest of the – that was the second game that we won, and we wound up winning another five in a row. So I'm saying to you that, that, that position sizing – and understanding how to fluctuate between um, the number of positions that you put on, especially in larger accounts, can really make a big difference. Stop levels, we most of you know a lot about. Term, determine your exit signal. Of course, this is where most people need to spend most of their time on exiting, not entering. And yet most people will continue to uh, deal with the exit, so the entrance strategy and, and somehow get flaky when it comes to exiting, especially with a winning trade where it's, it's going up. It looks like it's it's going to, this could be the dream trade. And then when it comes back, you don't want to be the jerk that didn't take your profit like your trading plan told you to. And then you wound up being even or less. And you say, well, okay, it really wasn't my money anyway. You've got to treat that, that profitable money as your money. Another day for that. And define your uncle point. How how much are you willing to lose on a particular trade? When are you going to say uncle? You know, we were fighting as kids. We used to pin our our knees down to somebody's they were on their back down to their biceps and and the guy would say uncle so we we jump off and everybody has an uncle point okay you got to know what that is and really in any individual trader really shouldn't be any more than two and a two and a half percent of your equity and in your package of trades as a futures trader i will have on two three four positions sometimes at one time actually no more than three for me i can't really focus on more than three positions at one time but when i'm managing those positions i, I never take a risk greater than five percent for the total of the three positions. So even if it all goes bad, which it doesn't all the time, but it does, it does it happens very seldom, but when it does, I'm not going to take any more loss than 5% than on my account, even if those rare situations happen. So you gotta define your uncle point. Build your system and then test it. Paper traded for mechanics. Paper trading is not very good when it comes to seeing if, if your trading plan works or not, your trading system works. Build, build it and then test it. You know, uh, test the, the system by by looking uh, at, at charts and so on and then paper trade it in real time and then take a small risk the smallest risk possible to 
uh, to run your trading plan. And then, of course, after that works out, take your design risk. So when you build a system, you've got to walk through particular steps. All right, pillar number two, risk and money management. Most important of all the steps. I think that most experienced traders won't argue with that. Again, position sizing. We've talked a little bit about that. I've talked about exit strategy. Okay, I've seen to talk about when it, about the trading plan, which is pillar number one. Um, it, it's so important, the elements of risk and money management that I've probably gone over a lot of this, so we'll go quickly. This is where the majority of research and development should be spent on the risk and money management area, which is opposite of what most new traders and struggling traders spend their time. Most struggling traders will spend their time on where should I get in? They, they study their, their, their charts on where the triggers, where they should get in, and then where they should get out is an afterthought. But And then when they're in position, they start to relook at everything. They start to relook at the market and relook at uh, the situation and sometimes change what they had designed in the first place. So I think you gotta, you, you got to understand that you got to stick to your plan. And, and the exit strategy is just important, if not equally important, to the entry strategy. Okay, here is where I want to spend a couple of minutes and then uh, we're almost done here after this, but I want to, journaling, you got to journal. And I'm not saying, I don't want you to have to write a novel every time you, or, or even have to, you know, write down every, I, when I journal, I don't write down my trades. Uh, you know, as a bonus, I mentioned to you that I'm going to make you an offer for the Discipline Trader Mastery Program at the end here. And I'm just saying to you that, um, that you know, a lot of the people that were on years ago, um, I guess it's about seven or eight years ago, uh, there were a lot of questions about when we really started emphasizing journaling, there was a question on how to journal. How do you journal? Do you journal your trades? Um, you know, where did I get in? Where did I get out? Why did I get in? Do you journal your emotions? What do you, what do you journal? How do you journal? Well, I went ahead and I asked, and we had uh, maybe five, three or 400 uh, people in the, in the program at the time, and I asked them, tell me, how you journal give me a sample of your journaling clip it and you know take a picture of it and and, and send it to me and uh, and what that resulted in was a a bon and this is one of the bonuses within the discipline trader mastery program there are 92 different ways that i that i, I unique ways to journal and they're all in this particular report Nine, i think it's 92 ways or 98 ways to journal so if you don't know how to journal uh, it's worth taking the free trial that I'm going to give you just to see that report, uh, whether you stay with us or not, and, and you will. But I'm saying to you that that you got to start journaling. It, you can you can do it with a statistical view review of trades made. You can do self evaluation. That's where I spend my time. I look at my trading. I look at my dailies. Actually, I look, I study my monthlies to see prog uh, processes and 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 where I may have flown and, and days of the week that seem to be. I I really break down the monthlies. Uh, from a statistical standpoint, but I'm not logging every day my trades. I, you know, I know they're in my head. I just did them, but but I do want to know the emotion around them. And I want to give you, um, I want to give you, if you're not, if you're not, if I never see you again, I want to give you a process to journal that you can start using tomorrow. Okay, you start at the end of the day, and then we're going to give you the journal. The, the way to take what you do at the end of the, the, the trading day and bring it to the beginning. Okay, the first thing that you say to yourself is a self critique. What did I do right today? This is the end of the trading day. You've finished trading, you're sitting down with your journal. You want a really nice quality journal. Don't take a, a black, uh, you know, a, a paper notebook. Get yourself a nice journal. Respect it, respect for who you are. Okay, what did I do right? Where did I, where did I, and then where did I not follow my trading plan? So it may look like today, uh, today I follow, I took every signal that was given to me for my trading plan, uh, and then the next sentence would be where did I not follow my trade? But I'm I'm I I moved my stop on my second trade today and it cost me uh, more than I had planned. Okay, so you 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 where did I not follow my plan? Now, I do something even more than that. Today I say to myself, to, I I write down. Today I did something that was not like me, or today I did something that was not Norman-like. You can use your own name. <laughs> today I did something that was that was I was beside myself, and I moved my stop, and it cost me. Okay, so the beginning of the of the journaling would would be what you, what you did right. Today I took every trading uh, every trade my trading plan gave me every signal 
that my trading plan gave me to enter a trade, I took it. I did it perfectly. But I did, uh, but I did something that was unlike myself. I moved my stop on my second trade and I lost money where I, more money than I had planned. Okay, what caused me to move money? I just mentioned that in my, that's, I, I moved my stop um, and that caused me to lose money. Okay, I listened to, a, you can even be more detailed. I listened to a talking head that scared me a little bit and I moved my stop. Um, I thought I'd be taken out, okay? What caused me not to follow my trading plan? And then the last part of this exercise is what will I commit to tomorrow to make me a trader, to make me a disciplined trader in that same situation? So the full context of what I want you to try tomorrow afternoon may sound something like this. Today, I took every trade my trading plan laid out for me. I did a great job there. However, I did something that was unnorman like I moved my stop because I heard something on CNBC and it made me think it's just going to take me out and then continue on without me. So I lifted my stop and it cost me more than I had planned for. Tomorrow, I will be the stop king and I will, I will be a living example on how to keep my stops in and adjust them according to my trading plan period. So you see what I did there? What did I do right? How did I not follow my trading plan? But, but take yourself, don't, don't hit yourself with it. I did something unnormal, like I did something beside myself. So what did I do right? Where did I not follow my trading plan? And what, what and you can give the detail of what caused me to, to do something not right. And then commit to where, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow I'm the stop king. Okay, and I'm going to show the world what it's like to be disciplined and a, a stop king. Okay, so the next day, um, now let me finish the, before I finish with the slide. Now the next morning, you want to say now uh, let me. <laughs> sorry, I get excited about this because when you start doing this, you're going to feel the power. I end every I end every entry, m the afternoon one that I just mentioned to you, and the morning one I'm about to tell you. I, met, I end it with, I'm a wise and disciplined trader, and I do the things that a wise and disciplined trader does. I'm a wise and disciplined trader, and I do the things that a wise and disciplined trader does. Now, tomorrow, now the next day that you trade, before you get started, I do my seven-minute mental training, okay, just to get me focused and, and, and get me, uh, and it's all in our program for you, and, and, and get you focused uh, on, on being the disciplined trader. And the first thing I write in my trading plan is to, uh, that last part of what I did the afternoon before. I take a look at it. And then I write it again. So today I am the stop king. Instead of tomorrow I'm the stop king that you did the day before, today's morning you're going to say today I am the stop king and I'm going to show the world what it, how, how beneficial it is to follow your trading plan or your stop move management and placement according to your trading plan. I'm a wise and disciplined trader and I do the things that a wise and disciplined trader does. Okay, do that if you take nothing from this. If you don't even take the crazy <laughs> deal I'm going to give you at the end, do this, okay, do this, do this, because it's going to, it's really going to help you, okay? Because training is a business, you need to provide certain things, okay? The business should be profitable. This is the last, and um, this is really a mental construct, a reframing, okay? Because trading is a business, you need to provide certain things, and that the business should be profitable, okay? You're in a business, okay? You, you, you got to, get a you got you want a positive bottom line okay the business should hold down costs what are those transactional fees and the great thing about exchange fees where i'm going they're almost they're, they're, they're becoming zero now but slippage is a big deal especially if you enter with uh, uh, you don't enter with market orders that you enter with slippage is you're going to enter with market orders but then again if you enter with um, with, with limit orders, sometimes it starts to get away from you. So sometimes if you have multiple positions, you may want to do a combination of it, depending on what feels good and what makes sense to you in your trading plan. But slippage is something that can happen when you, when you, I'm talking more about when your stop gets hit in a violent market, you can be filled at a, at a price that's not, uh, that you never expected. So uh, you, you got to hold down the, tra the your transactional fees, slippage, et cetera. It's a business and a business should be enjoyable. Okay. You've got to, your profits, when you, I'll make one other point here and then we'll, we'll wrap this up. One other point is that when you make a profit in a trade, when you close a trade, you P, you, 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 you P&L your trade's done, okay, and you've taken a profit, that profit 
is not a daily profit. That profit that you just took on that trade is part of the core, your base. Just like the 10 or 20 or $50,000 you started out with in your account, or 200,000, whatever size your account is, now it's $210,000, $204,000. Now that's the base and you defend that just like you, invest, you defend the core money. Okay, so you need to see your profits as profit. You can't take the you can't take the attitude that, boy, it's a profit. Let me take this B trade or this B minus trade or this B plus trade, not your A plus trade where you should be hanging out. You should be taking fewer trades with higher probabilities according to what your system results have been than taking lesser positions and more trades, okay? And, and, and you tend to want to do that when, you, when you're making a profit. Don't do that. Get more and more, get more and more, um, um, focused and more and more determined not to do that as you get profit. You want to keep that profit. It's a business. And trading costs and slippage, these are costs of doing business, like advertising would be in a business. So you've got to reframe it as a business. We have a whole little section on that uh, for you in the, in the basic part of the Discipline Trader. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the, the presentation. Oh, by, let's see, to have a successful business, you need to overcome your emotions. Uh, I forgot about this slide. Uh, have self-discipline and control, keep accurate records, and direct and control others. You need to direct and control others. And when I say that, I mean people around you that may not be supportive of what you're doing, um, and, um, and, and even your own thoughts. Again, you have to be your own best cheerleader, okay? Because in the long term, if your system is a, even a good one, you'll do well over time. It doesn't even have to be a great one, okay? So communicate effective orders all the time. So that's the end of the presentation. Here is my offer to you today, and I want to give it to you, and I want you to make sure that you take advantage of it. I want you to take the free trial. I want you to feel the power that you're hearing in my voice and my enthusiasm about trading. Um, Matt, Matt will be the first one to tell you, the guy that just uh, – was was just before me, Matt Buckley. He will tell you that discipline is. I feel like now I'm going to the fights. He will tell you that uh, that discipline is probably the key to uh, is the number one key to successful trading. And I'm gonna I want to give you a 14 day free trial. And after that, and there's no contract, you'll be billed. And you'll, your investment will be $49 a month for however long you want to stay with it. We've had people with us for over a decade. And that's how that's how energizing the elements of the Discipline Trader uh, Mastery Program is. So go to HTTP, the www, you have it right there, the disciplinetrader.com. And when you do, when you log in, this is what you're going to see in the Discipline Trader. You're going to see the, um, the basics. You're going to see the welcome area. You're going to see the basic series. I mentioned uh, about uh, journaling and some of the other things. This is all in the basic series. Core modules where we have these subconscious trainings that you'll be taking. The bonus material where that 95 journaling hangs out with a whole bunch of other endless bonuses. And the Discipline Trader lifestyle, I guess I'm going to mention this. Somewhere deep, when we were running this for several years, we got so many People telling us, you know, we're disciplined, we're patient now with our trading, it's turning out really well. But I'm finding I'm also disciplined with my with my wife and my kids and the, and the people around me. I see it to be. Is there a leakage in your head that, that was the, the the point of Adam is once you develop a habit, it can carry these positive habits can carry in the in other parts of your life. So the discipline trader lifestyle is really a culmination of nine CDs. Each of those nine CDs had ten mental training, seven minute mental training sessions on them for other things. Before we got into specifically the training business 20 years ago, golf, tennis, uh, um, selling, if you're a salesperson full-time and trade, so the sales, we had a sales myself, but all of those sessions are available to you, seven minute trainings in the Discipline Trader Mastery Program because we wanna help you with your own life now that you've seen how well it's done with your trading, okay? Simple trading plans is something that we offer, uh, actually you'll, you're actually not given simple trading plans, but there's a special deal for you uh, for simple trading plans. It's something, if you don't have a trading plan or you need a, 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 a goosing from the standpoint of, of, of starting a trading plan yourself, we have that. But the four-minute drills, that is as part of that pro, part of the Discipline Trader Mastery Program. And the four-minute drills are something that you really want uh, to, I did two, over 200 of them for four, I did it every Saturday for four or five years. And you know, they're all over the web, but I've put them all in one place for you. And it's just four minutes of, a, of power 
to get you going on a specific topic that may make sense to you, uh, that, that's, that, that you're wondering about at the moment you sit down and trade your, your stops, your, uh, your winning and losing, um, volatility, whatever it is. Of, of those 20, there's a four minute drill and I go to town for four minutes and really energize you in a positive way around that. So all of them are right there for you. Take advantage of this. It's for, sign up for the free trial and then think about it later. Okay. And, and after you've experienced some of the, if you take the mental trainings and you do them just seven minutes a day, you're going to wind up being one of our clients that's going to stay with us for a decade. Okay. So try the free 14 day trial and, and use that link, HTTP, www.thedisciplinetrader.com. All right. I am done. And I appreciate your staying with me. I appreciate the, the really, the, uh, the powerful people that you had on before me. I was, you know, I'm going. When I tell this story, I'm going to say that you help, you save the best for last. May or may not be true, but that's the way I'm going to tell the story.